Well, you've heard the expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This kind of falls into that category a little bit. Um, it's now starting on the second or third pull. It used to start off before I got the first pull completely out the full length of the rope. So I'm suspecting the carburetor is getting a little bit dirty. It is 15 years old and never been touched. Uh, it's run year round. That's probably why. You know, I haven't had any uh, ethanol issues uh, gumming up, but we're gonna we're gonna pull the carburetor, take it apart, clean it up, and uh, see what else I might do to it. So let's get started on that. So this is a pressure washer, but that's not important. It's just the uh, Briggs and Spratton, Briggs and Spratton. How about that, Briggs and Stratton? Uh, 175 cc engine uh, fairly common vertical shaft uh, this guy has been bugging me so I'd like that a little more solid is you know just a plate I'll figure out why it's so wiggly uh, and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drain the gas out and there's probably still gonna be some in the bowl but that's okay let me get this hose off and uh, get the fuel out of it Move the camera, get the cap off, smell up the garage. <laughs> anyway, I know the filter's good, so that's not going to be an issue. There we go. Yeah, the filter's in uh, real good shape. I mean, there's literally nothing in there. So. Not like a lawnmower where you running around in the dust all the time. So let me drain the fuel like I said. Alright, tech tip. Uh, I used to have to dress out in protective clothing and we would put on uh, cotton gloves before we put on our nitrile gloves and uh, that helps get the gloves on and off because when you remove them you know it could be contaminated and you do not want to contaminate your hand <laughs> you can see I did a job already with these gloves so you just put on these uh, cotton gloves and it helps get them on easier and when you take them off you still have a, a glove on to get the other one off uh, if you're contaminated you know anyway let's get on with the show and like I said, draining the gas, there is no cutoff valve, so this is going to be a drain procedure. All right, I got my little coughing container here. Pull the plug, hopefully. That guy's really getting, getting on there. Most of the video is going to be draining the gas. Good grief. There we go. Okay, there is some water in there. So what I did is I put some dye in there to help me identify water. And sure enough, got a little puddle of water in there. So that's really probably what my problem was. Uh, but like I said, it's 15 years old. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor, run it through the uh, um, sonic cleaner, put it back together, give it a pull, see if that takes care of it. Okay, Briggs and Stratton is standard, but I'm using metric. Got a 13 millimeter here. So it's, you know, it's half inch, 9 16, some, somewhere around there. Pull this out and see what it see what we get in the bowl. And we got water. So that's really the problem. I mean look how clean that bowl is. So since it's just water, you know, I'm I'm not too worried about a deep clean and getting all my little 
torch tip cleaning tools out and uh, going through everything so I'm just gonna take the screws off throw it in the sonic cleaner and put it back on see if we can get a one pull out of it so I got my 5 sixteenths here see if I'm going in the right direction up a little bit here and you know I have my screwdriver not my ratchet should be good enough yeah they aren't on there very tight uh, let me take this off too good job yeah Definitely did not follow procedure on this one, I can tell you that. There we go. There we go. There's kill switch out of the way, fuel line out of the way, sort of. I think I'm going to pull it off of here. That way I have room. So on the one that you can't see is the kill switch. So, so we'll get the screw and the kill switch out of the way. And we will do our unhooking uh, spring choke and governor throttle, auto throttle right there get those off all right this guy's just gonna drop off it's a plate here get the spring off remove the plate and I'm gonna get the choke off Wiggle it enough and move it enough. And then the throttle. Oh, yeah, the throttle curves around the other way. All right, then we also want to watch our washer here. Have a, these things have a tendency to grow. It may be very difficult to put on the uh, spacer here or insulator. So you need to be careful. Uh, putting that back on, probably a good idea to just put a new one on. Uh, let's see if I have that. Alright, here's all my BS parts. Well, let's see what I got. Uh, I got a few things. Let's see what this is. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yay. And we're looking at 793628. Seal O ring made in chin. All right, so that's going to go there. Carburetor gasket, I do see some mauling. It was not leaking before I took it off. Um, here, let me take the bowl off of there. Let's just pull the pin. Use the tool to get it started. And I use my fingers on camera here. Check out the float needle and the float seal. Check those out real good. All right, also in my goodie bag, looks like I have plenty of gaskets, so we'll put new gaskets on there. Uh, looks like I have uh, more gaskets and a float bowl O-ring, so I might do that. Replace it since I've got it. And what's in here? Oh, 
That looks like a carburetor overhaul kit. Oh crap. I don't know if I need it though. I just don't know if I'm going to pour the parts into it or not. I don't even see a part number on here. Interesting. Alright, so this was the carburetor overhaul kit. I have a float pin, a seat, needle, uh, o-ring. Uh, that I assume is a float bowl o-ring. Let's see what's on the float bowl. I don't see anything. Well, I thought I lost my float bowl nut, which is also a jet, but there's the gasket. So... I just threw it on the floor. What a dummy. Throw that in the cleaner. Uh, this is like a gasket, like a paper gasket. And this is, oh, I thought it was an O-ring, but it's a paper gasket too. So I'll, in, I'll inspect those and see what kind of shape it's in. Probably reuse it. I mean, crap, it's been on there, like I said, for 15 years. So... Let me keep going. So I really don't see any buildup really on the choke and it looks pretty open too. Uh, you know it's not like a solid plate, complete butterfly valve. There's plenty of ways for air to get around it. Definitely put on a new gasket. See how the gasket goes on there. Um, I'm not gonna disassemble it. I don't see any adjustments on here. There's no idler screw. There's no uh, jet screws. I mean, there is this down here. Oh, crap, both the bowl or the needle valve seat and the main jet is solid. That's not even. You know, and you typically see them being unscrewed out. What is that, like push down or something? Interesting. Like I said, I'm just going to throw it in the sonic cleaner and let it have at it. And there is some water in there. Alright, there's my carburetor overhaul kit in a bag. Now it's in a box in a bag. Save that for another day. So for this piece that was flopping around on me, it looks like there are some teeth in there and you just kind of push on it and let it bite into the plastic. And then it doesn't flop around anymore, or not as bad anyway. So I'll make sure that's good and tight. Clean this up a little bit, make sure there's no water in there. Also, you want to be careful, there are these little alignment tabs for the gasket. You don't want to break those off. Be careful. Uh, because, you know, when you're taking it off, you don't see that. So, you just want to be careful that you don't bust those off. Not that that's important, but it will help you put the gasket back on correctly, because if you block off the air path, uh, you'll be hating life. All right, since I had water in the tank, I'm going to go ahead and pull it. And I'm using a 10 millimeter. I know it's Briggs and Stratton. I said it was standard, but anyway, there's a little spacer underneath there. Let's see what's going on. See if I have another super secret hidden screw in there somewhere whether this thing will pop off oh yeah I remember now there's a screw right down here so you're gonna have to take the uh, top cover off, cover off if you want to take the gas tank off of there so the only thing that makes taking the cover off a little difficult there's three screws on here take those off take the uh, pull starter off uh, you just kind of have to finagle this uh, plastic piece out. Uh, you can always unhook it. I've done that before. If you want to stick something down through there and snap it out. Otherwise, just, you know, be aware that it is there. 
and uh, that you have to work it out. So there are three posts. Uh, this one holds on the magneto, one of the magneto bolts, if you will. This one holds on the gas tank, one of the gas tank bolts, if you will. And this one here, uh, I need to look. I don't think it's part of the gas tank. Maybe it is. Yes, it is. Sorry about that. So these two have to come out for the gas tank. Again, Briggs and Stratton, but you know, I typically always use metric tools anymore. But anyway, it is a half inch or 12 millimeters. All right, gas tank off. And even though I took the hose out, there is still liquid in there. And since water is heavier than fuel, uh, might be some water in there, but I'm going to dump it out. Okay, there's no external fuel filter, so you want to look down here at the fuel filter, which is inside the gas tank, and make sure that's clean. Uh, if you suspect that it's dirty or you don't like it, you want to wash it out, you can back flush it. So you pressurize this and blow it out so that uh, any dirt or debris that the screen has trapped gets uh, pushed out and you want to be careful not too much pressure and so just kind of clean this out a little bit well I tell you <clears throat> getting all the water out of here was really quite a chore I mean I can still see some droplets in there so, but, you know, it kept getting caught up on that plate over there to the side. So, just getting all the water out was just a fun, fun, fun thing to do. I think I'm going to stuff a dry rag in there, too, and uh, work on it that way. Finish it up. So, I'll stuff a rag in there and let it soak up as much of the little teeny little droplets as I can get. Also, you want to notice there is a gasket on here that's glued on, so do not remove it. However, if it does come off, don't lose it. You can also see there's a metal piece in there. They're called torque limiters. What that means is as you tighten down the screw, it goes metal to metal and you can't tighten it any further. So there's no need to put uh, superhuman strength onto torquing down the screws that hold the gas can on because it goes metal to metal. So you don't need to, you know, try and bust this plastic into a million pieces. So that's what that is. Uh, this one has a spacer on it. So be sure and get that spacer back in there when you put it back together. Alright, let's get my rag out of there. And I do see some blue on here. I wonder if you can. It's kind of difficult, but anyway. Yeah, you know, like I said, I put some dye in there so that it would dye the water and not the gasoline. They uh, put chemicals in it to make it smell so you know gas is around <laughs> put out your cigarettes anyway all right let's get this back together so here is the screw it goes on here you can see it goes metal to metal so when you tighten it down you can only get it so tight so we'll do that and then the top is to hold the cover on which is also fun um, Check your linkage, check your spark plug wire, make sure that's routed correctly. There's a very specific place for it to be routed. Um, uh, let me look at this vent line here. I actually think I have one. Let me look. Still looking for my vent line, but anyway, just wanted to show you the back gasket, the spacer gasket. It's going to go on there like this. You can see here the original one that is not 
ever been removed. I can get my camera to swing over there. And let me zoom in a little bit. You can see the tab sticking up. Tab sticking up, so it's going to go on there like this behind the spacer. But since that's not coming off, I'm just going to leave it be. Okay, I do have one, and it is part number 7964782 breather. And notice how it's very long and skinny on one end, and then it's uh, fat on the other end. So there's no putting it in backwards. <laughs> Pretty much pretty obvious now how does it come out <laughs> so there is an air dam here a plate that you know allows air to be specifically directed to help cool the engine uh, and then there's the governor rod and it appears that it just pulls out but I'm kind of struggling with it so hopefully it's not too bad and I got it out, just pulled it out. I'm going to push the new one in. And it's pretty much covered in oil. But I'm definitely going to install the new one. I can see it's kind of deformed a little bit. Alright, I do see some rub spots on the kill wire. And that's the one going to the magneto, so if it would have touched somewhere, it would have grounded out and not started. So, because this is the end that goes to ground, and then your switch is in between them. <laughs> so that would not have been good, so I need to do something about that. Okay, also going to get my PVC hole inspection. Uh, look in there, see if I see anything I don't like. Because I really don't want to tear into this engine. I'm going to get a rag and clean all that out. I just see a little bit of oil. Yeah, probably just sheer age. So, let me uh, clean that up a little bit. Well, this is really turning into a big project here. I'm going to have to redo the magneto because I need to redo the wire. And I really couldn't get at it really well to unplug it. So I turned the flywheel so the magnet is not here at the magneto. And then I'll just take my bolts out. Make the video really long here. <laughs> Get the magneto off. And there is my wire. So I am going to inspect the wire. I might tape it up because I really don't want to cut off the ends and reinstall new terminals. So we'll see what I do. Okay, I'm going to take the lazy way out. I'm just going to electrical tape just to build up the insulation. I could cut it uh, and then solder it together with my uh, heat shrink tubing over top of here and do all that. But I'm just going to go cheapy way, easy way electrical tape. So I could have soldered it all up and everything but uh, I just decided that nice thick electrical tape do the job. Eh, speaking of spare parts probably get a magneto just to have on hand seeing as how it's separating that means something in the coil could give way in the future. Plenty of rust on there clean it up a little bit so we'll get my ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and get it on here you know business card or whatever that works too so let's get that alright get my 0 0.01 inch which is 
0.25 millimeters. We'll get that on both sides here. Um, if you want, you can bring the magnet around and use the magnet. I do that sometimes. go we just tighten those down with our half inch because it's a Briggs and Stratton Snug. I do not want to screw these up, I can tell you that. That'll be like the end of the engine. All right. Should be able to pull these guys out. Maybe. There we go. hand back in front of the camera make sure there's no collision all right we just put our kill switch back on here so it's in the way when we do our reassembly you know just thinking ahead <laughs> do a little prep work here get some cleaning done because I'm anal like that. I mean, if I work on someone else's lawnmower, I will pressure wash it or otherwise clean it up before I even start on it. I just can't stand to pull off a carburetor and just have it full of crap. I mean, on the outside, you know, just, I just don't like dealing with that. All right, let's get this breather back in here. See how much trouble it gives me. Looks like we've got to do a little twisting and turning here to get it in all the way. Because I don't even know if it hooks up to anything. Just some giggling and wiggling and it just popped right in there. So if it does go into something, and I apologize for not looking that up and seeing if it does I just got it to a point where it's about a half inch left and I just wiggled it a little bit and it <laughs> slid right in so that as they say is that okay I'm just gonna get my hot water here and then I'll put my carburetor in there and let her rip we set it to the maximum and 480 and the only thing fragile in the whole thing is the seat I would think but I'm really not too worried about it let's see airs going in here so this is the well this is, I'm not gonna say <laughs> See if if the whole thing will submerge in there, then uh, there's no problem. Uh, I'm gonna since it's not completely submerged in water, I'll let it run one cycle and then flip it over and do another cycle um, um, flipped over. All right, let's flip it over. Yeah, I definitely see some dirt in there. Not too bad. A little bit of fluid. That looks better. Alright, get my hand in front of the camera here. Get these parts out. Take a look at them. Wow, 
I actually see debris and it's clogged up in there. I <laughs> have to clean it out. I have various tools available. This, this is a pick to uh, take electrical connectors out of their sleeves. And I have uh, needles. And I have um, a torch tip cleaning tool. So I'll just use what I have and clean it out. Gosh, I really couldn't capture it. I, there it is, all cleaned out. But I tried capturing what was in there and I couldn't. I also couldn't get anything down there. I didn't have anything small. Uh, I could have used the needle, but I decided just to uh, use pressure. So I applied pressure to the top end and blew it out the sides. And I tried to catch it in the rag like this, but nothing happened. I was able to see a few pieces that came out, but it was so small. All right. Hmm, seems to be water in the carburetor. Ha, ha, ha. All right. All right, I'm gonna clean off the old gasket here. Get some razor blades, I guess. Clean it up. Super easy. There we go. Okay, I see something in there that came out. I'm going to have to put that back. And the water's a little bit cloudy. Float pin. Hopefully it's not a one-way pin. This is a pretty old system, so I don't suspect that. Some of these pins are staked on one side, or one end is larger than the other. So you got to be careful on newer equipment. All right, we'll get the gasket and the bowl on there. See how it was since I'm reusing it. Put the bowl up there. The bowl screw, which is also the main jet. Get that on there. Using my 13, I think that's 9 sixteenths in American. We'll just get that snug. Oops. Forgot something. All right, now we need to coordinate everything. We have the uh, mounting plate here, which is actually a, holds the spring. Uh, we also need to uh, put the ground wire through the screw that holds on the carburetor. So we need to do that. Now there's no gasket on here. See, there's no gasket. It's also keyed. So you just put that on that, that away. Now we need our new o-ring which I left in the bag until now so that I don't get it mixed up with the old one. However I kind of doubt that because the old one see how large it is? See I'd actually have to like 
press it in place it's kind of grown a little bit so let me get the new one see if that's any different feels different looks different yeah I can actually see that it's smaller look at that well wow, that's amazing uh, it's probably hard to see on camera we'll just get this guy in here wow that fits on much better than this one that's been saturated in fuel over the years as the vapor passed by and now we're going to need our carburetor the uh, fuel line faces forward but we should be able to tell by the shape which way it goes all right with my o-ring in place I'm gonna pull the kill wire ground and put that in separately without this guy being in the way here well I gotta get my throttle cable ready because I need to hook up everything so throttle first so we are going to do that then we are going to do the choke all right then we are going to get our mounting screw ready put our kill switch wire through there and line it all up and make sure our o-ring doesn't fall during the process other side up Next we're going to get our spring on there and what hooks on to the throttle is the, I'm calling it the short end. You could see how it's open and then the long end or the closed end, excuse me, uh, you can see how it's closed. So I'll show you that. Let me get this one on, the easy side first. it looks like I'm done but I'm not all right let's get this guy in there see if I can get my hand out of the way here but I can't <laughs> there we go I might be able to show you now there we go <laughs> sorry I had to stick my hand in there all right, going with four on the carburetor install, which are these torque screws. All right. Okay, next you want to fit the gasket on the intake manifold. Uh, there are different gaskets, so you want to make sure you get the correct one. So, let's 
So here's a gasket that is for a different model. And you will see it just it just will not fit. See the breather hole is in the wrong place. You just can't can't get it on there. It won't go. So be sure and get the correct gasket unless you make them yourself which is pretty rare nowadays so you get your gasket on there you get it started on the tabs it'll fit in there really tight it'll be I mean that gasket isn't going anywhere okay get your screw started here breather hose connected there we go yeah connecting the breather hose allows the screws to go on a whole lot easier all right gonna connect my kill switch that's gonna go here Alright, got a real chicken and the egg situation here with the gas tank. You know, you got to put the gas tank on before you can put the shroud on. Because the top cover shroud bolts here hold the gas tank on. And remember, you have those torque limiters on there so it's not like you're going to really crank down on it just get it good and tight so just half inch snug it up I mean the only thing it's holding on is you know the starter and the starter is holding on the cover and don't forget the screw underneath here um, if it's not lined up there is a little bit of wiggle room otherwise do not tighten any of the screws until everybody's in place so let's get that going don't know how well you can see this Let me switch right hand left hand left hand right hand here get this thing a lined I just have a low number like a four. Make sure your wires are connected. Again with the four. Top shroud, it's fun because of this piece back here, part of the air system. Um, it's stationary, so it has to create its own cooling. So, this is always fun. Get this in here. back so it will go over the engine I'll show you all right see there's the plastic piece right there I had to pull it out a little bit to get it to go onto the back of the engine all right let's get the pull starter on there and these little teeny little nuts that go on there again with the four A little 
still a little loose, but acceptable. Oh, I see where the wire was hitting the shroud, I guess. I guess that's what was going on. Okay. Air cleaner. Cover. And we'll need waterless petrol cap. Then we'll need to connect the fuel tank to the carburetor. It goes on a lot easier than it came off. And it tucks in right here. Sure, we're all good and tight here. On all the way. So that the next person can't get it off. For the drum roll, let's see how it works. All right, back to one pull. Very happy. Thank you for watching.